Hi, my name is Amy Calliers, Senior Cloud Advocate with Microsoft, and join with me today is Federico Garini, Senior Cloud Solution Architect for Customer Architecture and Engineering for ABS. Thanks for joining me, Federico. Hello, Amy, and thank you for having me. This will be great to go over, but before we go into your network design guide, I wanted to go over the agenda. We're going to go explain the whole design guide, the approaches used, and the best order for use. We also have these accelerator landing zones for reference architecture and reference implementation. So as you can see, the Azure VMware Solution Landing Zone Accelerator has different design guidelines for you to go through. Um, there's different design areas from network topology, connectivity. So we definitely recommend you check that out. The second link that we also have is the GitHub repository. You might even find this network guide there right now, but um, we have our accelerated landing zones and different options for greenfield and brownfield deployments. So let's start with the network design guide to go over all of this stuff. Yeah, sure. So the uh, network design guide uh, is uh, an additional piece of content uh, that we recently published uh, uh, in our enterprise scale for uh, AVS uh, repo. It is a documentation that uh, describes uh, the recommended approach uh, to designing network connectivity for AVS. This uh, recommended approach uh, aligns uh, with the uh, Azure Landing Zones uh, reference architecture. AVS connectivity is a very broad topic. Uh, uh, sure. and, <laughs> yeah, and uh, an AVS kind of cloud may require uh, connectivity to multiple different things, uh, connectivity uh, to Azure native resources, uh, connectivity to on-prem data centers, uh, connectivity to the internet. And uh, AVS customers have complex uh, and uh, often conflicting requirements. This guide suggests uh, a divide and conquer approach to tackle them. Okay, so can you tell us more about the approach used and advocated by the Network Design Guide? Yeah, sure. Uh, the uh, guide identifies uh, four main design areas, uh, which are uh, summarized and presented uh, at the very beginning of the guide, uh, as you can see here. Um, the first design area is uh, connectivity to on-prem sites. Uh, then we have uh, connectivity to Azure Virtual Networks. Uh, then uh, inbound internet connectivity, and uh, finally outbound uh, internet connectivity. Um, it is important to note that these four design areas are not uh, completely independent of each other. Design decisions made in one area may limit the options available to you in other areas. The Network Design Guide recommends the order in which uh, the four design areas uh, should be tackled to, to minimize such dependencies and to avoid uh, entering loops, uh, whereby every new element added to a design requires going back and reconsider design decisions already made. Okay. So then what would be the best order recommended by this design guide? Well, um, the most uh, critical design area is connectivity between AVS private clouds uh, and uh, on-prem sites, especially data centers uh, with uh, complex network. So it is critical that uh, uh, this is addressed first uh, so that the full spectrum of options uh, can be considered without any constraints uh, set by design decisions made for other design areas. Next, it makes sense to finalize uh, the design decision for connectivity between AVS uh, and uh, native Azure virtual networks, because that decision is uh, almost entirely driven uh, by the uh, connectivity option chosen for uh, connectivity with on-prem sites. Finally, internet connectivity should be designed. Inbound and outbound internet connectivity are two different things from a routing perspective. Therefore, the guide uh, considers them, uh, them as uh, two different uh, design areas. The recommendation here is that uh, inbound internet connectivity should be addressed first because some decisions made for inbound internet connectivity may limit the options available for outbound connectivity. Okay, so do you have uh, any final thoughts on everything? Yeah, definitely. While the Network Design Guide provides for each design area a pretty comprehensive set of options, real-world implementation may need to address very specific constraints or requirements. The ability to adapt the options presented in the Network Design Guide to specific scenarios does require a solid understanding of the basics of ABS networking. This is why the guide contains an introductory section that summarizes the key concepts. It is not meant to be a replacement for the ABS official doc because 
that stays the ultimate authoritative source of truth for anything related to AVS. However, it provides a cohesive view of AVS networking with links to the relevant documentation articles in the official uh, doc. Um, this uh, uh, introductory section is uh, presented immediately after the design areas and uh, can be found by clicking the link here. As you can see, it is a collection of topics uh, that are uh, important to understand uh, before uh, starting to design complex uh, ABS network solutions. Great. Um, it's great to have all this at hand to help us decide what to do first. And, and since everything builds up on another, like a building block to make that right decision in the, in the beginning is really important. So thank you, Federico, for covering what the network design guy is. And I believe our next video will be covering that design phase one connectivity of ABS to your on-premises data center. That's Thanks. right. Thank you, Amy.